Christmas Trolls. That page came out. I'm Treva, and the day my brother Sammy and I went to our neighbor's farm to pick out a Christmas tree was the beginning of the most unforgettable Christmas I ever had. As we went home through the forest with a perfect tree packed on the sleigh, Tuffy started sniffing and barking. I couldn't see anything, but I felt sure someone was watching us. When we arrived home, we forgot all about the forest. Mom and Dad had brought out our boxes of ornaments to decorate the tree. Sammy and I put evergreen wreaths, mistletoe, and holly all around the house. We had already wrapped our presents and hidden them away for Christmas morning. Then some of our Christmas decorations started to disappear. I didn't notice until Dad asked if we had moved the trinket box he had hidden for Mom. I shivered because Mom had just asked me the same thing about the mittens she had knitted for Dad. Sammy and I looked in all the usual hiding places, but we couldn't find them. Tuffy was acting strange, too. He sniffed and barked and ran around in circles as if he were looking for something. Then a few days before Christmas, the treetop angel was gone. What would be next? I started carrying my favorite red horse everywhere. See, you got her favorite red horse right there. Early the next morning when I went to feed Arnie, I saw something flying across the snow. It was our Christmas pudding. I harnessed Arnie, bells and all, and raced after it into the forest. As I got closer, I could see that our pudding was being carried along, pincushioned to the top of a hedgehog. I didn't know what to do, so I yelled, Stop! Come back! But it didn't stop until it reached the bottom of four fir trees. The hedgehog put the pudding down and scampered off. Just then, the trees started rocking back and forth. Suddenly, a funny-looking ladder dropped down from above, and two trolls scurried down, pouncing on the pudding before I could even move. They pulled it back and forth as they went up the ladder, squabbling all the way to the top. I climbed right up after them and looked inside. There, on the floor of their troll house, were all of our Christmas things in a heap. The trolls were grabbing at them, each one wanting what the other one had. Hey, trolls, I called. Those are our Christmas things. The trolls dove onto the pile, clutching our gifts. Mine, they clamored. Mine, mine. I looked at them and had to smile. Their shirt tails were hanging out. Their pants were torn and patched. Their cheeks were bright red and their hair was standing straight up from all the pulling and tugging at each other. Christmas, they wailed. We want Christmas. You want Christmas, I asked, puzzled. Yes, they shouted. Give us Christmas. Well, you can't just take Christmas, I said. The trolls looked surprised. They squeaked. They gulped. They shuffled their feet. Want Christmas, they said, sounding miserable. See, there she is in there with the elves. Okay, you can have Christmas, but first, what are your names? Mig, said one. Tig, said the other. I looked around their messy hut. Mig, Tig, let's begin by getting your hut ready for house ready for Christmas. I started to straighten up and put things away. They began to help. Nice, I said when we had finished. Now let's make your house look like Christmas. We went outside and gathered evergreens, berries, and pine cones. Now we need a Christmas tree, I told them. That's easy. You live in the trees, so you can have four trees instead of just one if you want to. Christmas trees, they shouted, jumping up and down, and we decorated each of the trees that held up the troll house. Tig and Meg had a small setback on their way back to the hut. 
I knew I had some more explaining to do. When I first got here, you were snatching things for yourselves and acting really, really grumpy. Try playing together and having some fun. Fun, they asked. I showed them how to jump rope. I told them how much I liked their tail knots and earrings. They smiled shyly and started tucking in their shirt tails. Nice hair, pretty belt, they said, grinning at me. And then they taught me a little troll dance. They were catching on. Now, if you really want Christmas, you must be generous with each other. If you do that, you will have Christmas right here in your troll house. The trolls cocked their heads and squinted. They were trying hard to understand how they pleaded. I felt my red horse in my pocket. I knew I had to show them. So I took it out and gave it to them. This is for you. Aww. The trolls squeaked and jumped up and down with glee. They took turns passing my horse back and forth, happily playing with it together. It was time for me to go home. I slipped out quietly and climbed down to Ari, Arnie. To my surprise, their hedgehog had packed all of our presents in the sleigh for me to take home while we were having Christmas in the troll house. Well, that's good. On Christmas morning, Sammy and I ran downstairs to find our tree alight with candles and our stockings filled. We opened our presents in front of the fire. But this Christmas was full of surprises. I heard a bumping and a scratching noise. Tuffy barked. I listened and followed the sounds. Outside on the doorstep was a Christmas present. I unwrapped it and found a wild and wonderful troll horse. Tig and Mig, I exclaimed. When I held it, I knew for sure that the trolls understood Christmas, and I knew that this was the best Christmas ever. <laughs> hmm.